Hello, hello everyone, Ryan from Avatar Aquatics and welcome to another video. Today we're talking all about how to breed the majestic Emperor Tetra. So let's get started and dive right into it. Emperor Tetras are one of the easiest Tetras to breed. They oftentimes spawn right in your community tank, but having a dedicated setup ensures that the eggs and the fry will not be eaten by the adults. Their bold, flamboyant personalities encourage the shyer species of your tank to come out and hang out in the open. I spawn these fish in pairs in a 10 gallon tank. I have a sponge filter and a heater on the left side and the heater is set at 75 degrees Fahrenheit. These fish aren't that temperature sensitive so anywhere between 73 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit will be a golden range for your fish. On the right side is my spawning medium, in this case, a huge clump of java moss. I keep a rock on the top so that as the sponge filter is moving the water around the tank, that java moss stays right in the right corner and protects the eggs from being eaten. Males and females of this species are very different. The males have a rich neon blue eye and when the light hits just perfectly, you'll see that this coloration extends throughout the top half of their body. Now, they also have a yellow bar on their bottom fin and a very distinct dark black extension on their tail fin. This male is trying very hard to get the female into the moss so he can start spawning with her. The females have a lime green eye and no tail extension, although the black coloration is still there. When you're at the local fish store and looking to get your school, you're probably only going to notice the difference in eye color as the finnage differences come in when these tetras are more mature. I condition the parents in the community tanks where they're most comfortable. I feed them a daily diet of nutritious flake food and I supplement with live baby brine shrimp every other day. After one to two weeks, the adults are ready to be moved into the breeding containers. I'll then feed them one last time with live baby brine shrimp shown here to facilitate them getting used to their new spawning conditions. After that, I'll turn off all the lights on top of the tanks and then leave them in subdued lighting until the next morning. As dawn arrives, the gradually increasing ambient light levels trigger bursts of activity, and this is when spawning will occur. A few hours after dawn, the tetras would have already finished breeding, and this is the time to remove the parents. You're going to notice the white unfertilized eggs first, but do not worry, this is a natural part of spawning and there will be plenty of viable eggs. It's crucial to remove the parents at this time so they don't go digging through the moss and looking for eggs to eat. In the center of the screen is a little scattering of viable eggs that will soon hatch. These eggs only take about 24 hours to go from egg to fry, so it's very important that we have everything that we need already. I like to siphon out these viable eggs and then hatch them in a smaller container so I can keep a very close eye on the fry themselves. The hatching container has the same water as the spawning container. I use the softest water I can find, whether through distilled or RO water, and then soak that in peat moss or catapa leaves, also known as Indian almond leaves. This lowers the pH to around 6.2 and also adds a lot of tannins into the water, which helps with the fry and the parents feeling comfortable to breed and grow. Although the eggs will hatch within 24 hours after they are laid, I still add one drop of 1% methylene blue per 100 milliliters of water to ensure that no fungus will ever attack and kill my eggs. I have a link in the description of the methylene blue that I use. 24 hours later, the fry will have already hatched out. They're still super underdeveloped and will remain at the bottom of the container for the next four days as they become free swimming. 
it's important to ensure that the temperature remains constant and you can do a water change on the second or third day, but ensure that that water comes from their spawning tank in which they were born. I transfer the newly hatched free swimming fry on the fifth day after the eggs were laid into their grow out containers. I feed them Infusoria twice a day, and be sure to check out the link in the description if you're curious on how I make my Infusoria. Look how tiny these fry are. They aren't ready for baby brine shrimp for at least another week and a half, so don't feed any more baby brine shrimp at this stage as you'll only pollute the water. At around weeks three to four, you'll start to see the black stripe on the Emperor Tetra babies come in. At this point, the fry are already happily on baby brine shrimp, and that is the main staple diet that these guys have every day.